So what would you say, what would you, what, if you were sitting in a room, like, I don't know, a, a real room and you were chatting up someone who was thinking about starting their own business, what would you say to them? Like what formal advice would you give them or what insight would you give them to help them along? Well, you know, I would say that you really need to, if you have a few passions first, you really need to focus on the one that's going to help you get to your deepest why, you know? And you need to really have people surrounded that can help you with different areas. Um, You know, there's a lot of people out there that are willing to give you advice for free if you can't pay for it first. And that's why it's so great to, to form kind of like relationships of people that, you know, that might be in finance or people that could help you with like a business plan um, to, to start getting that structure. And once you can do a little bit of that, then you can build slowly, right? But my biggest advice would be really, and this comes from learning from bank is, you have to really be able to connect with people and you have to let go of what you think is good for everyone. (laughs) Right. Like you, I I love what you said. You're like, I'm not that huggy person yet, but I'll guess I'll get there. But you know what, Bobby, you might not feel comfortable with that all the time. And just because other people are, it's okay. Okay. That's not your dominant personality, right? No. So it's okay. And if people approached you and said, I realize that she is not that hugger, but she would rather have me approach her like that, then when you respect them more and feel like they understand me. 100%. Right? So that's the beauty of this. Like, I learned from this. Not everybody wants to hug. And I have to be okay with that. And it's not saying they don't like me. It's just saying, I'm not a hugger. You know what? And they say this about children too. Some children will walk over to their families and just love them and hug them. Some children don't want to do that. And a lot of parents force their kids to do that. Mm. You know what? If you've got a blueprint kid, they just want to shake hands with your family. And you should let them allow them to do that. If you got an action, they might just want to like give them a fist pump or like kind of like a nod, like, yo, what's up, mom? <laughs> yeah. You'd be okay with us, right? I-, I could see how parents would have to do the work on themselves first to be able to be accepting of that. But if the parents, right, if the parents don't know what they are first, then it's hard to be accepted, right? Right. You know, my daughter loves self sports, which means like she likes to golf. She likes kung fu. She does not want to be on a soccer team like all the other kids are, right? And that's okay. That's not her. She likes to do these sports that she can grow in and have her personal growth. So why are we going to push her into soccer and make her unhappy? You know, some kids like to sit at home and read a book. They don't want to do sports. And those are like some of our smartest kids, their knowledge. But you have to find a way to engage them into social settings so that they are not considered nerds when they get older. Mm -hmm. You know, they have these labels because they never got really taught how to be part of a team and not so much a sports team. You don't push them into that. I've seen, I I would have thought as an outsider and not a parent that uh, homeschooling would be a way for the kids to feel isolated and not part of the team. But now that I know a family that homeschools, it's brilliant. And she's, she's definitely a very mindful mother um, and lets her kids flourish. And I can see kind of the difference. Uh, you know, her two boys are like so sweet. She's 
co-ops and there's still community without it having to be forced. So appreciate you saying that as well too. And I'm going to totally go off the rails because as you were talking about the forcing them into things, and I had really no idea where this conversation was going to go, if I'm being honest, but I'm learning so much. I'm so grateful. But I keep thinking of the, you can't leave the table till you clean your plate method, right? Something about that really bothers me. We're an obese population here in the States, but we force our kids to eat. Like, I don't know if that's part of what you can help people with um, or help with the girl's image or whatever. But that's something that I see on TV or like all these things. And I don't know why it's that way. (laughs) So I just randomly had to call that out. But is that something you can help with? Yes, because, you know, being again from the big Italian family, we were always like, eat, you know, grandma cooked everything from scratch. Like you didn't eat at all. What's wrong with you? You know, you are every 15 minutes. Are you hungry? Do you want to eat something? I had to break that habit of asking people when I had them over for guests. You know, Tom's family's not like that. They don't always eat. (laughs) (laughs) Well, he eats love in Italian. Like, exactly. I get it. (laughs) But um, yes. You, you shouldn't do that. That's one of the things I think society makes a mistake with because kids know when they're done and it's okay. It's okay. You know, that whole thing of kids starving in another country puts an awful image in their mind. You know what? Yes, there are kids starving everywhere and it's sad, but you know what? You, that doesn't mean just because they're not cleaning their plate that they're doing a bad thing. Yeah. And you're right. The image in the magazines of girls, clean your plate, but be skinny as a rail. It's such mixed messages. And we wonder why girls grow up so confused about what they should be, who they should be. Yeah. I'm sorry. I went down a little rabbit hole there. No, it's no, it's great because I, Again, it all comes back to how we communicate with one another, right? It really is. And when we bring things that we are conscious of now, that was embedded in our unconscious, we start to, we start to grow more as a person. Like, I didn't realize I was doing that. And now you do. So now you can break that habit, that pattern to be a little bit better, right? And it doesn't come overnight, it's, it's like everything in life. It's a skill you have to work on. But once you get the knowledge of the skill, once you're accepting and loving of that skill, right, instead of putting yourself down, give yourself grace, right? Yeah. Once you can put it into action, and once you take the steps for yourself, you can take it for your children or any relationship. Right. Then... That's, that's the beauty of growing. Yeah, that's, and it's the same for business. Same for business. Oh, yeah. Once you have those skills, then you become confident and you start to grow your business. Exactly. 